So in trying to understand what happens with uh, chemical equilibrium, we have to understand something called the equilibrium constant, which is a constant, a proportionality constant, that governs these equilibrium situations. It's different for every reaction, and as long as you don't change the temperature, it will be constant for a particular reaction. If you change the temperature, it's going to change uh, the equilibrium constant, but we'll see how that works later on. Okay, so start with we have something called the law of mass action. This is a, the, the official name for what we mean by uh, writing an expression for an equilibrium constant. Okay, um, it was created or mathematically determined how this all works out um, in the late 1800s. Uh, Goldberg and Volge were uh, two Norwegian scientists that did the work. Um, and they came up with this. So imagine we have this reaction and it's, uh, it's substances A and B reacting to form substances C and D. The coefficient of, of those each substances are J, K, L, and M. You'll notice a double arrow in between the reactants and products. That is what we use for equilibrium. Now sometimes it's written as just two arrows like that. Sometimes it's written as two half arrows, one going forward, one going backwards. That's the symbol for equilibrium. That means that we have both reactions occurring. Uh, interestingly enough, most chemical reactions actually reach equilibrium. Even ones we think of that go to completion, in other words, all the reactants form products, uh, if you leave it alone in a container and you don't remove any of the products, it's going to start, it's going to reach equilibrium and some of those reactants are going to go back. Now, most of the time reactions like that, we, we lie, they lie so far to the right that we almost don't consider them to be at equilibrium, but if you leave them alone, they will eventually go to equilibrium. So we have this equilibrium constant K, and we use a capital K for the equilibrium constant, not to be confused with the rate law constant, which is a lowercase k. Very important that you understand that. Usually when I write them by hand, I write a script lowercase k for the uh, rate law reaction, and a, just a capital print k um, for the equilibrium constant. So um, the first thing that might be a little confusing is knowing which k you're using. The convention is lowercase is rate, capital is equilibrium, just to keep that in mind, okay? The form of the equilibrium constant K is, is written like this. It is the concentration of each product, concentration of products, raised to an exponent that equals their coefficient, divided by the concentration of reactants. Uh, each each substance's concentration raised to the coefficient of its uh, raised to the power of its coefficient. Okay, so for a reaction A times B or A plus B going to C plus D, our equilibrium constant form, our expression for equilibrium constant is the concentration of C raised to its coefficient L, times the concentration of D raised to its coefficient M, divided by concentration of substance A, which is a reactant, raised to its coefficient J times concentration of reactant B raised to its coefficient K. Okay, That's how you do it. It's always products over reactants, concentrations. It's very simple to write an equilibrium expression. Now there are some rules and some things that we're going to have to consider, but that's how basically how you do it. Okay. So here's our reaction again, and we want to understand where that comes from. Well, it comes from the fact that the definition of uh, equilibrium is that the rate of the forward reaction and the rate of the reverse reaction are equal. That's where this comes from. Let me show you what I mean. So if you understand that the rate of the forward reaction, A plus B going to C plus D, remember rate is only dependent on concentrations of reactants. So it's equal to this uh, rate law constant K with a little f meaning forward reaction times A to the J times B to the K. And the rate of the reverse reaction is the opposite way, right? So it's there's a K, there's another K for the reverse reaction, a KR, and then C to the L, concentration D to the M. If the rates are equal, rate of forward reaction equals rate of reverse reaction, right? I can set them equal to each other. And I can get the K's on one side and everything else on the other side by using just algebra. I get KF over KR is equal to concentration of C to the L, concentration D to the M over concentration A to the J equals con uh, times concentration of B to the K. That KF over KR ratio of rate constant of forward reaction to rate constant of reverse reaction we call the equilibrium constant. So that's really what it is. It's a ratio of rate constants. Okay. Now, rate constants, you remember, have all sorts of weird units depending on the order of reaction. Don't worry about any of that. We typically don't use units with the equilibrium constant because they're so varied and so weird. So we typically don't use them. It's a ratio, okay? It's a ratio. 
and it's a ratio of concentrations to concentrations. So the, the units of K will probably be some sort of concentrations uh, term, either concentration squared, or maybe there won't be any if, if the concentrations cancel out, if, you know, for things to the first power. Uh, it doesn't matter. What matters is it's a ratio. And so we just use the ratio. And the size of K can tell you a little bit something about how the reaction uh, exists at equilibrium. Does it lie to the left or, or right? And we'll talk about that as we go. Okay, so that's how we write an expression for the rate law, and that's why. So try this one. Stop the video and try it. Here's the reaction. We have 4NH3 plus 7O2 goes to 4NO2 plus 6H2O. Write me an equilibrium expression uh, for that. Now, when we say equilibrium expression, we mean K equals and then some expression. Okay, so go ahead and try it. Did you get it? Does it look like this? Concentration NO2 to the fourth power, concentration H2O to the sixth power, divided by concentration NH3 to the fourth power, and O2, concentration O2 to the seventh. What about for the reverse reaction? What would it be? Easy. Flip it. Take the reciprocal. Because in the reverse reaction, uh, ammonia and oxygen are products, so they go on top, and NO2 and H2O are reactants in the reverse reaction, so they go on the bottom. So you just take the reciprocal. Okay? The equilibrium constant always has the same value at a certain temperature. It doesn't matter how much stuff you start with. It doesn't matter the initial concentrations. The ratio of the concentrations of products to concentration of reactants at equilibrium will always be the same as long as you don't change the temperature. We will see why temperature uh, is a factor a little bit later on um, in, in our study. Okay, So here's an example of three uh, different experiments run for the same reaction where we have uh, nitrogen and hydrogen gases forming ammonia. This is right out of your book, okay? And experiment one, we start with one molar concentrations of both of those. We get our, our uh, concentrations at equilibrium. We have no uh, ammonia to start with, obviously. In equilibrium, we have those. We do our, our K expression. We come up with a value of 6.02 times 10 to the minus 2. It doesn't matter what I do to my reaction. Look in the second experiment. We started with no reactants. We started only with products. While it goes backwards, the reverse reaction occurs at equilibrium. We have new concentrations that we can measure, and the ratio is always going to be the same, as long as I don't mess with the temperature. Okay. So each of the equilibrium concentrations in each of these experiments depends on what I started with, but the ratio is the same. So that's the nature of the beast. Now, if you mess with the equation a little bit, for example, if you change the coefficients, you divide everything through by the same number or multiply everything through, that's going to affect your equilibrium constant. But you can easily calculate what the new equilibrium constant or should look like just by doing the calculations. Okay. So as long as you don't mess with the reaction, the form of the reaction or the temperature, uh, your equilibrium expression, your equilibrium constant will have the same value. 